When our next presenter was cast as Dr. Owen Hunt in Grey's Anatomy, there were two things he had to give up. One, his mellifluous Scottish accent. And the other was wearing a kilt under his hospital scrubs. Yeah. Please welcome the very talented and still mellifluous Kevin McKidd. In the 47 years since the U.S. Supreme Court's landmark decision in Roe versus Wade, it has been the single most contentious debate in American politics. Perhaps that's why in the almost half century since Norman Lear brought the controversial episode Maud's Dilemma to network television, very few shows have the courage to craft and produce stories about a woman's right to choose. The Grey's Anatomy episode, Papa Don't Preach, illustrates what can happen when a single mother attempts to terminate her pregnancy alone, in secret and in shame, in an unsafe way. This episode also shows what can happen when a caring medical professional provides a woman a safe and legal option without judgment. A choice that for the time being in the U.S. is a woman's choice and hers alone to make. Take a look. The doctor said the labs and imaging showed an eight-week pregnancy, so you're all clear. Okay, so that's it? It's just the pill? Two pills, actually. You'll take one medication now to block the hormones that keep the pregnancy viable, then a second pill in 24 hours to help contract the uterus. You'll feel nauseated and crampy, probably emotional because hormones. Okay. And it will be difficult when you're passing the tissue. A lot of doctors say it's like a heavy period, but it's more than that. It's completely safe. I just want you to be prepared. Here to accept the 2020 Sentinel Award for Grey's Anatomy, one of our amazing executive producers, a brilliant writer, and a friend, I'm proud to introduce Dr. Zoan Clack. When we first started talking about how to depict a home abortion gone wrong in the Grey's Anatomy room, I thought, how do we do this in a way where I won't have to hang up my public health degree? Well, as it turned out, I didn't have to. Instead, we let truth be our guide, and that is what led us to the end product of telling a grounded, truthful story about the real choices facing women across the country. While our room was working on this episode, I happened to be working on an article for National Geographic magazine and had taken a deep dive into research on women's health. That coupled with the technical expertise that HHS led us to in the form of Gretchen Sisson, who knows everything about everything in relation to how abortion is and has been portrayed in the media throughout the history of portraying it in the media, we were able to avoid some of the pitfalls common to tackling this issue dramatically. She urged us to keep in mind that most women who get abortions are already parenting or want to be parents later in life. And she encouraged us to not portray self-management of abortions as intrinsically dangerous or the abortion process itself for that matter. We knew that we wanted our character to already be a mother, so we didn't want her to inflict bodily harm onto herself because it didn't seem very sympathetic that she would knowingly cause an injury to herself while being a mother to, her, to a young child. We considered the idea of protesters at abortion clinics being the reason she couldn't get one, but in my research, I had seen how access to care, lack of insurance, and insurance that was tied to jobs or spouses in America was such a big problem in women's health, and I felt like this was an opportunity to highlight those issues. We are so proud to be recognized for this award, and we are so thankful to HHS for providing the path to truth for us to do justice to such an important topic being this one and many others throughout the years.